Hello and good afternoon. My name is Eran Lederman, and although this conference is uh, focused on disasters, it is my pleasure to be here today. And uh, I would like to uh, extend my gratitude to the organizing committee for this wonderful platform to present our ideas uh, of how to, des to design for the next disasters. Our DFD group. RDFD Group is focused on design as a tool to create objects, services, and systems that can save lives. This can be before, during, and after a natural or man-made disasters. We believe that design as a cross-cultural and diverse discipline holds many keys to developing better disaster resilience. Our group name, RDFD, that stands for Relevant Design for Disaster. Um, you may ask yourself how design may be a relevant tool to cope with disasters. The design process is built upon three major factors, people, environment, and products. Since we all in this room know what disaster is, let's talk about design for disaster. When nat na nature and its extreme hits intensive populated area, significant damage is created. This is where design for disaster become relevant. You may have noticed that environmental and human factors are essential for transforming natural phenomena into a disaster. Think, taking all these factors into consideration, we at the RDFD have decided to focus on the human factor as a prime target. So, who are we? Mo some people say, some people say Israel is a startup nation. Others say Israel is a disaster. Some realize how vulnerable Israel is to natural and human-caused disasters. Israelis try to turn these disadvantages into prosperous, innovative advantages. Most of us, all in our office and even in our pockets, a device called Disk on Key or Memory Stick, which it was designed and developed in Israel like many other innovative solutions. We come from Bezalel Academy of Art and Design, which is located in Jerusalem. Though you may not have heard about Bezalel until today, it has grown many key players in the local and international design fields. I have been part of Bezalel for the last 20 years. From my point of view, there is nothing like the experience of being surrounded by such innovative and creative young minds of our students on a daily basis. The, the 2004 Indian Ocean Tsunami raised our awareness to the possibility of working with our students to, on design as a life-saving and risk reduction tool. Here you can see some examples of designs created by our stu uh, students. Most of the faculty at the industrial design department are active designers that bring a lot of real world experience into the classroom. So let's ask ourselves how we design for the next disaster. I would like to show you one of the most illuminating projects that we did. The project called Hope Spot, the, the project created as a part of the deserves designer safer urban spaces Consortium, the project that received funding from the European Union Seventh Framework. We ask ourselves how to enable communication and crowd management when infrastructure collapse in a major disaster. It was clear to us that we need to create an efficient, low cost, and accessible solution for handling communication failure 
disoriented crowd in a disastrous event. As a, disaster, as a designers, our challenge is to visualize the optimal outcome of the project from day one. This is an image of one of our leading ideas. We thought that we have the wonderful idea. We tried to map the project but by what must to have and what nice to have in, the, in our projects. And the first experiment, experiment that we made on the shore of the Dead Sea was a total failure. Many days of careful planning and five seconds of grave disappointment. The disappointment turned out to have a positive outcome. This diagram presents the mapping of the new collaborations we initiate in order to create a richer understanding of the project needs. Instead of large aerostat and a simple wire, we switch to a smaller and simple aerostat and much more sophisticated self-illuminating the wire. Three more experiments to reach our goals. You can see up in the sky the balloon and the wire, the illuminating wire, signing where the ground is. Can you show the movie, please? The next one. Natural disasters, such as earthquakes, tsunamis, tornado storms, and floods, hit dozens of cities around the world every year. When a city is in ruins, the survivors might find themselves in extremely difficult situations, often with no electricity, water, medical supplies, and accessible roads in some cases without the ability to contact the authorities for assistance. This type of situation takes a long time to resolve and leads to additional casualties. Whatever big sign showed up in the sky and led everyone to the closest aid center, where the survivors would get help or be evacuated efficiently, this could be a lifesaver. Hope Spot was developed to answer that need. It's a helium balloon with a special aerodynamic shape, like a kite, it moves on the wind, and the glowing wire creates an actual pointer to a desired location. Hope Spot can be deployed within 50 meters above the highest point in the area, so it doesn't require an approval from aviation authorities. It's about 2 meters in diameter and is designed to handle harsh weather conditions. The string is equipped with advanced optical units emitting strong light, and the device can be easily handled by only one person. Hope Spot can be seen from a distance of up to 1,200 meters at daytime and up to 5,000 meters at nighttime. To guide a population of a big city, multiple devices will be required, but this is not a problem. Everything needed to deploy Hope Spot and keep it running for four days straight is packed into a single case, which is as big as a backpack and weighs only 26 kilograms, so it can be easily mobilized by a single person and transported in any vehicle. As well, there is a special version of the case that allows you to drop Hope Spot from an aircraft. That case can activate the device automatically. Or it can be pre-installed in the strategic points of the city, ready to launch at any time. In such cases, the device can be made bigger and include extra equipment, such as an emergency cellular antenna. In times of peace, Hope Spots are a great crowd management device as well. They can point out vital locations during mass events. As people become used to the idea of signs in the sky, they will react more naturally to it during times of emergency. Hope Spot, a professional tool for efficient, low-cost crowd management at times of peace and emergency.
I would like now to share with you two of the RDFD group ongoing projects. The first one, called PEP Capsule, Package of Essential Personal Information for Disaster Solutions Situations. The research is focused on developing an essential personal information package. The package activated from a communication device such as mobile phone when all network collapse in a different location and a disaster scenarios. The main idea is that we can give each of the, if one, the information that he personally needs at this specific location in a specific scenario. The second project called Fabric of a Local Knowledge, developing mobile network workshops deployed in a disaster zones to create solutions utilizing local skills and, exper and exper expertise. L and last, I would like to use this opportunity to invite you to the presentation will be delivered by my former teacher, Professor Ido Bruno, tomorrow, 10 a.m., on this, on the subject of Earthquake protection table. Obviously, this is our. Oops. Sorry again. This is a regular table, and this is ours. Thank you very, very much.